Vinny, I made it out of the scary woods and into this spooky mansion. Oh, hey. I'm great. Thanks for asking. I don't know. Something doesn't feel right here. So, you're not even going to try to acknowledge what I'm saying? I'll check it out. Stay on the comms. Why do I keep answering your calls? You never listen. Resident Evil. Whoa. Thank goodness this place has a room similar to where I do my videos. You know, this mansion is pretty darn spooky, but it reminds me of one of my favorite video game franchises. Resident Evil. If you're unfamiliar with Resident Evil, it's the video game franchise which branded the term survival horror. And if you're unfamiliar with survival horror, it's an action adventure slash horror hybrid that's put into this game and that was specifically made for marketing Resident Evil 1 in 1996. Though retroactively, it can be applied to Sweet Home in 1989. Uh, uh, by the way, that's the, uh, that's the predecessor to Resident Evil, the spiritual predecessor. Same company too, Capcom. What separates survival horror from other action adventure games, uh, besides the spooky element of it, of course, is the limited resources that you get. As opposed to a game like Halo, where you have an ample amount of health and ammo to shoot the bad guys, and they can shoot you right back, and it's no problem. I actually learned about Resident Evil through GameTrailers.com's Screw Attack's top 10 GameCube games of all time. Resident Evil 4 was at number one, and I was a little mad that Beautiful Joe uh, only got to number seven, but it's just fine. It's like I don't I don't hold any like grudge against Screw Attack. Like 15 years later, I mean, it's, I, I, everyone has their own opinions, and you know I respect that. <laughs> and, cut the camera. A lot of gameplay elements that you see in Resident Evil such as backtracking, inventory management, and quick time events were also present in Sweet Home, which came out seven years before Resident Evil. That's because Sweet Home's director, Takuro Fujiwara, was the producer on the original Resident Evil, and he worked with Capcom before on Ghost and Goblins and Bionic Commando. By the way, Bionic Commando, the original title for that was Hitler's Resurrection, colon, Top Secret. It's weird. In fact, Resident Evil was originally conceived as a 3D remake of Sweet Home, but it was going to have a first-person perspective and be a shooter like the game uh, Wolfenstein 3D or Doom. But after playing the 1992 video game Alone in the Dark, the original game's director, Shinji Mikami, decided that he wanted to do the fixed-angle perspective that you see in the final game. I should mention that the Japanese franchise name for Resident Evil is Biohazard, but everywhere else it's Resident Evil, uh, because Biohazard is, uh, was the name, is the name? Was the name? I don't know. Uh, was the name of a New York punk band, and, uh, Biohazard Battle was also a video game that came out in 1992 for the Sega Mega Drive. I don't know much about the game, but the box art looks cute, cool. It's, 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 a, it's a, like Grim Reaper worm fighting a spaceship, some bugs around. But they ultimately decided on Resident Evil because it takes place in a residence, uh, the mansion, as previously said, uh, where no good happens, or dare I say, evil. For this video, I'm tackling the main series 
of uh, Resident Evil, excluding Zero and Code Veronica. Uh, but I'll skim over those real quick. Uh, Zero follows Rebecca Chambers, who's a side character in the first game, uh, as she investigates a train with opera-controlled leeches. <laughs> It's pretty dumb, even for a Resident Evil game. And Code Veronica follows Chris and Claire Redfield from the first and second game. And it was originally supposed to be Resident Evil 3, but they wanted to keep all their games on PlayStation and Code Veronica was being developed for the Sega Dreamcast. So the side uh, Jill Valentine centric story got promoted to the mainline uh, Resident Evil 3 on the PlayStation, and Code Veronica was dubbed a spin-off on the Dreamcast, so all the mainline franchise was on PlayStation 1. Well, uh, until uh, GameCube came along, and then Zero and 4 were on that, but don't worry, uh, if 5 was uh, on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, but eventually that came to a Nintendo system with uh, Resident Evil 6, and uh, just, my point is this is really confusing, and uh, I'm just going to be sticking to the ones with numbers on the end of them, and there's eight of those, so as Philip DeFunko Pop once said, let's just jump right into it! These first three games were part of the Fixed Angle Trilogy. A at least that's what I call it. You can call it whatever you want. These took inspiration from Alone in the Dark, and they had a fixed camera angle, which gave them a cinematic edge over other games that were coming out at the time. I should say for these first three games, I'm playing the remakes, uh, not the original P PS1 versions. Only the first game stuck with the fixed camera angle gameplay, whereas the other two were just straight up third person shooters. And they're pretty fun games, I like them a lot. Uh, the only thing I wish they carried over from the original was the line, You, you were, were almost, almost a Jill, Jill sandwich. sandwich. That's become a running gag in other Capcom games. Resident Evil 1, as mentioned before, has a pretty simple setup. You and two other members of the Special Tactics and Rescue Service are trapped in a haunted mansion, or residence, if you will. As you navigate the mansion, you'll encounter scary monsters infected by the T-Virus, and spooky puzzles to whittle away your mental exuberance. Through fragmented journal entries and notes by people who are definitely dead, you can sort of piece together what's happening in this mansion. Also, every monster poses a serious threat, so when you encounter one, the best course of action is usually to run away. Sure, you can shoot at it, but you have a small amount of bullets and even less health. So if you go face to face with a zombie, you better be prepared to load up a save. And speaking of saves, you can't be saving all willy nilly. Trust me, as someone who played Pokemon and got beat by the last of the Elite Four and had to go all the way back to the beginning, I'm a notorious saver. Get a key item, save. Sit through a cutscene, not a second time, save. Kill a guy, well, it would be cruel to kill him twice, save again. But with Resident Evil, the ink ribbons that you get, each one costs one save. So you have to be sort of careful and strategic with your saves. Do you save before going into that unknown room and take your chances on what's on the other end? Or save afterwards? The remake is pretty much on every major console nowadays, so I recommend picking that up as soon as you can. This game gets a big old thumbs up from me. I, I'm not going to be writing every game. I, j I just want to give my opinion on this one. Well, I'm going to give my opinion on all of them if I think about it. Um, but, you know, this game's not for everyone. But, but really, what game is? Well, I guess Mario is kind of for everyone. Capcom started development of this next Resident Evil soon after the first one was finished with a fresh-faced Hideki Kamiya, who also directed Beautiful Joe. This was originally supposed to be the conclusion of the franchise, but much like Terminator 2 Judgment Day, they changed the ending in order to make more installments for the franchise. This installment was more accessible than the first one, where the first one just came out on PlayStation 1. This one was also ported over to the Nintendo 64. 
nowadays it's even more accessible on the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the PC all carry the 2019 remake of the Resident Evil 2 game. Uh, I, I play the uh, PlayStation 4 version, so I'm going to be talking about that one for this video. This game takes place a few months after the original game, where the T-Virus reaches a nearby urban area called Raccoon City. You get the opportunity to play as one of two characters, Leon S. Kennedy, the rookie cop, or Claire Redfield, uh, who is looking for her brother, Chris, from the previous game. What's cool about these two campaigns is how intertwined they are. If you play as Claire, you get to encounter Leon a couple of times, but if you play Leon, you can relive those same events from a different perspective and get a new point of view. It's sort of like Back to the Future 2 or Lion King 1 and a half, where you get to relive those moments from a fresh new perspective. The original RE trilogy had that fixed camera angle perspective I was talking about, but for the second and third remake, they'd had a third person perspective. And holy cow does it improve the game vastly. Now when you go forward, you move forward, and you keep going forward. The wonders of technology. On top of all that, you have Mr. X, the tyrant himself, trying to chase you down where you're, when you're trying to figure out where the heck to go for a good chunk of the game. You're trying to solve the mystery of the unicorn statue when this dick bursts in and sucks you right in the jaw. What an asshole! This is probably one of the more influential Resident Evil games. Uh, the original sold 6.1 million copies in its lifetime and the 2019 remake is almost at 9 million units sold. In fact, filmmaker Edgar Wright used Resident Evil 2 as a plot point in a 1999 episode of Spaced, and eventually that led to the classic Zom rom-com, uh, Shaun of the Dead. The remake of Resident Evil 2 is probably in my top three Resident Evil games. And then I moved on to Resident Evil 3. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was supposed to be a side story with Code Veronica being the main entry and the definitive third Resident Evil. And after playing the 2020 remake, makes sense. You see, the first two felt like a grand adventure, even though they took place in one location. There's a storyline you could follow, but you could progress at your own pace. In the third one, you have this asshole nemesis following you around everywhere in the city. Like, sure, Resident Evil 2 had Mr. X, but he came in midway through the game when you were a little more familiar with the Raccoon City Police Department. Well, in the original, Nemesis doesn't come in until a little bit into the game, but in the first 10 minutes of the remake... Pow, and you gotta explore the city while this bozo is chasing you down, and I haven't even had time to explain the plotline. Oh yeah, I should probably do that. Resident Evil 3 takes place a couple months after the mansion incident from the first game and Umbrella, those are the bad guys by the way, set loose a tyrant to hunt down the survivors of that incident and the two that are in Raccoon City are Jill Valentine and Brad Vickers. Y'all remember Brad Vickers, right? He was the helicopter pilot that abandoned you at the beginning of the game only to come back when you were fighting a tyrant. Anyways, uh, he dies a little bit. So, um, Stakes are high. Along the way, you meet Carlos Oliveira, who works for the Umbrella Corporation, but don't worry, he has a heart of gold, so he's chill. And together, you work hand in hand to escape the city. Follow me, set me free, trust me and we will escape from the city. You may have noticed that this remake looks eerily similar to the remake that came before Resident Evil 2 from 2019. That's because it uses the RE engine that was first used in Resident Evil 7 and then the RE2 remake. Uh, a lot of assets are recycled here. I, I su suppose there was a quick turnaround time. There's even a part where you explore the Raccoon City Police Department. And man, that just makes me want to play Resident Evil 2 remake again. 
And the game's also really short. It took me 10 hours my first run, which isn't very long in video game land. And it's just one campaign, so I, I can't recommend this game at the full $50 in 1999 that was supposed to be a spin-off game. Or $60 in 2020. Hey, that's an interesting topic. Uh, video game prices, they're, they're not great nowadays. Do you want to know why? Well, actually, in the 70s, there's this man named... Okay, so I have two jewels, a red one and a blue Maybe one. Maybe I can use one of them in the library to obtain that book I or need. Or I can put the two jewels in that mountain moose's eyes and hopefully open a secret passageway. Or maybe I should pawn it off to the merchant in exchange for that gun, which will allow <laughs> me to you. plow through these zombies. Or what if I need them for later on? What if these jewels are- Oh! Whoa. Ah. Guess I zoned out there for a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, puzzle solved! All right, gang, how are we holding up? Uh, everyone doing fine? Need to pick me up? Uh, my mom packed some apple slices, uh, and I'd be willing to share some with you guys. I also have a can of root beer in there, and I'd be willing to give you a sip. Not a gulp, a sip. Uh, I, I have one can of soda a day, and I don't need a greedy gulper cutting into my caffeine stash. Okay, so we're all good. Uh, jeez, what was I talking about? I went off sort of on a tangent there. Oh, speaking of tangents, uh, Resident Evil 4 had a long development cycle. Uh, it came out in early 2005, six years after the third one was released. Uh, Hideki Kamiya from Resident Evil 2 was originally slated to direct this game, and he wanted a cool, stylish action game. And that didn't really fit well with the previously established fixed camera style. So the RE team ditched that to make a third person game. Eventually, this game evolved into Devil May Cry, and uh, that's a great game within its own right. But a couple iterations later, Shinji Mikami made something legendary that we all adore. Four. Anywho, this game kicks ass at every angle possible. The game still looks fantastic, even 15 years later. And the plot is, you guessed it, you're Leon from the second game, and you have to save the president's daughter from scary monsters. Even the dialogue is perfect. Where's, Where's everyone, everyone going? going? Bingo. Bingo. Masterpiece. You can also buy and upgrade guns from a merchant who's always at the right place at the right time. The villains are really memorable as well. And you can play as Ada Wong in this new side quest for Resident Evil 4. That's like a whole game within a game. Crash Bandicoot. Is there a problem? No, no, just, uh, how do you, uh, how do you make it go? Resident Evil 4 is fun through and through. Anyone who plays video games needs to play this video game. It's on most systems nowadays, and it's even in VR. Play the game! So hot off the heels of one of the best games of all time, how does Capcom up the stakes? Yo, co-op. BSAA or not, that's why I'm your partner. Help put them at ease. Well, I'm sure you'll do just fine. Resident Evil 5 marks the return of Chris Redfield, and he has a new partner named Shiva Alomar as they travel to Africa in order to prevent the selling of a bioweapon. But the locals were infected by Las Plagas, so Chris and Shiva have to battle through. You and a friend, or you and a computer, 
have to battle your way through and find out if Jill Valentine is still alive. Because she's here too. For this installment, Capcom went with the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. So this game performs a lot like 4, except this time your inventory is just 9 simple item slots. You can put anything in there. No more playing Tetris with your guns and ammo. Also, the D-pad allows you to quickly switch your weapon. So no more pausing to switch your weapon. You gotta think on your feet. You gotta think fast. These zombies are coming at you like a bing a bang a bonga. Also, Whisker dies in this one. Oh, I I forgot to mention Wesker. Um, okay, so he's like the bad guy in the first one, but also kind of the fourth one. He's dead now. Don't worry about it. If I had to sum up Resident Evil 5 in one word, it would be safe. You have that same action from, from Resident Evil 4. The co-op is fun, but overall unnecessary. But you do get to punch through a boulder with your fists. Whew, is it hot in here or am I in a volcano? Fuck Resident Evil 6. Okay, all right, I'll go over it a little bit. Resident Evil 6 came out three years after Resident Evil 5. So this was a fairly rushed game, but it was a really ambitious game too because it had four co-op campaigns with Leon Kennedy, uh, Chris Redfield, Ada Wong, and Wesker Sun. It, it just spread itself out too thin plot-wise. It told most of its stories through cutscenes, and the camera was like your biggest enemy for some reason. D didn't we figure this out like two games ago? Anyways, Capcom realized the error of their ways and decided to dial back the scope with... Gee whiz, the puzzles sure are complex in this century-old house. Well, that's incredibly straightforward. Good evening, Gage Agnew. By now, you're knee-deep in this sinister Victorian nightmare. If you're watching this tape, congratulations on making it this far. However, it would be dishonest for me to say that the worst is behind you. You must have a multitude of questions. What is this horrid place you've stumbled upon? What are these supernatural beings you've had the misfortune of encountering? How did you find yourself in this unfortunate predicament in the first place? Well. These answers are quite simple. I suppose the most ideal place to start would be my childhood. This chemical weapon was meant to change the world. A threat that would keep the world in check for decades. It is the root of it all. The very factor that motivates leaders like me. And it was all really quite... A cup and a half of flour, a quarter cup of sour cream. You do despise people like you. May your damnation come shortly. Oh, well, I guess that's it. Uh, wow, I guess that wasn't very informative. <laughs> Capcom made Resident Evil 7 so gosh darn scary, I can only play 15 minutes at a time. You 
know, it, it, it follows Ethan Winters. Uh, I don't know why I said you know. You don't know. That's why you're watching the video. This follows Ethan Winters trying to hunt down his presumed dead wife after he receives a video message from her. He travels all the way to Louisiana, the scariest of the states, by the way, and he encounters the Baker family, which are, they're definitely cannibals, uh, a la the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Whew, spooky stuff. Resident Evil 7 takes its gameplay into a new perspective with its first-person view, making the scares very up-close and personal. A lot of the Resident Evil staples are there, such as herbs, puzzles, safe rooms, but it feels fresh with its very intimate scares and its claustrophobic setting. The setting and characters are fresh and new for the series, and it doesn't shy away from blood or gore either. You have to navigate the big Baker estate in order to find out what happened to Mia and the Baker family with their, with their hideous moldy fingers. Uh, Resident Evil 7 was exactly what the franchise needed, a fresh start with enough connecting tissue to the larger franchise. So where do you go from there? Why Europe, of course. This installment follows Ethan as he goes to Europe, trying to relocate with his families and leave behind the horrors that befell them in Louisiana. Mia gets killed, and his daughter's taken away by Chris Redfield. So Ethan has to go on another wacky adventure with vampires and lichens and Magneto. Oh my. Resident Evil Village is my second favorite game in the Resident Evil franchise because it combines the horrors and fears that you have in the seventh one with the action of the fourth one. There's one part where you have to tear through a meat hook with your hand, but there's also another part where you have to shoot a bad guy with a homemade battle tank. The inventory management from the fourth one is back with its suitcase system, and you get to upgrade weapons by talking to a big man in a carriage. Resident Evil Village is the perfect blend of action, cheese, and some genuine emotional moments. And that's what makes Resident Evil as a series so special to me. It's not afraid to give you a shot of fear with some lighthearted moments in there. And it's really, really scary because it explores all different horror genres, but it has its own identity. Nothing can quite scare you like a video game, and Resident Evil is a staple in the survival horror genre. Uh, well, I, I should really stop talking to the wall about video games and find my way out of this dump. searched every inch of this place, I figured every complex puzzle, I beat every boss, so why can't I find a damn exit? Huh. I wonder. locked. Come to think of it, what was I running from? Oh well, off to Denny's. Gauge your interest. Vinny, I made it out of that horrific situation. Well, that's great. Hey, your landlord called about your room. And I would like to and... thank all the people who supported me on Patreon. Of course you would. Thank you to that's... Reynold Hughes, John Agnew, Super Swim Team 7, Parker, and Inertion. Without you guys, I couldn't pull off big, uh, extravagant situations and fun like this. And if you like the video and you're new here, feel free to subscribe and like. Uh, it really helps out the channel, and it puts a smile on my face. So, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Isn't that right, Vinny? Vinny? <laughs>